Welcome to The Graceful Warrior, the podcast where grit meets grace and strength is matched with righteousness. Join us as we delve into the stories of those who navigate life's battles with poise and determination. Each episode is a new chapter in the quest to embrace challenges with an open heart and a steadfast spirit. So lace up the combat boots and let's embark on this journey together. This is The Graceful Warrior, where every battle is an opportunity to rise with grace. Well, hello, Graceful Warriors. Welcome to the Graceful Warrior Podcast. Hey, how did you like my new intro? I absolutely loved it. For those watching the video, I hope you like that little, that new little video skit. Um, a friend of mine that is now part of my team in video and imaging, illustrating, whatever it is, he is my go-to buddy. And so I appreciate what you did, Jake. Um, you are the best. Your skills are are just pristine, right? So hello, everybody. It is Monday evening. Today is tax day, the dreaded tax day, right? And um, there's only two things that are guaranteed in life, taxes and death, <laughs> right? And they, they're probably both one and the same, but um, Lord says pay to Caesar what is Caesar's. So, you know, be obedient in that and the Lord will bless you for that. I know we have a wicked government, but not everything is wicked. We do have things that we need to run to keep things going in our country. So um, trust the Lord in everything, right? And be obedient to God's word. All right. So with that, I have a few announcements. I just wanted to come on here and first give you a praise report. He found my manuscript for the book. And so I'm really, really excited. So thank you for all that have been praying for that. I don't even know where it was, what happened. And I didn't even ask. It's just the fact that we found it over the weekend. Yesterday, Sunday night, I got home from church. After I had church, I had meetings. And then I got home, got to my computer, and I was up till 11 at night just editing, proofreading, making sure everything was okay, was still there. And it is back in the hands of my editor now. And the great thing about this is I was not expecting this book to come out until as late as August. But, it, you know, everything, that's why the Lord says, walk by faith, not by sight. Because it is the Lord Almighty that when things are, are to happen in that timely manner, it will happen because the Lord is in charge. He lives outside of time. We only live in time. And so I was just amazed at all of this. And I want to encourage you that no matter what you're going through, even with all the government and political crapola that we're going to get to in a minute. Trust in the Lord. Walk by faith, not by sight. Make sure you lace up those combat boots too, right? That's the key thing. <laughs> and I wanted to tell you also that this week we are going to be uh, studying um, a couple of interesting things. This week we're going to take um, a journey and look at from guilt to grace. We're going to explore the depths of guilt, its impact on our lives, and how it can often hold us back. But we're also going to discover the path of freedom and understand that there is a healing through God's love and His grace. So stay tuned for this episode Wednesday, and I promise it's going to enlighten, inspire, and free you from the chains of guilt and knowing that the Lord is the one that will free you from these things. And then we're going to go backwards the following week, next week, because we are doing the series of slaying the giants of. And we stop it off because we're doing the alphabet from A to Z. And I want to take a look at E in this aspect. 
It is not really an emotion, but it's something that entraps us and even has an effect on our emotions. And if you've heard of it, it's called the Enneagram. And so I want to look at the evil of the Enneagram and how it is not biblical for true Christians to be involved in. And you're like, I've never heard of this Enneagram, Monica. Praise the Lord you have it. But for those that have, like, I went to a church once that actually pulled me into this as part of their sign up to be a member of this church. You had to do this Enneagram. And it was a per, it's a personality quiz. Remember ever getting those from your friends where it's like, take this quiz and see what type of hero you are, what type of fruit you are. But the Enneagram goes deeper into that human psyche. And it tries to look at the traits of you and say, this is where you'll fit in our church. But oftentimes it's the root of the matter of how did the Enneagram come about? Who created what was involved in this? So we're going to take a look at that and go, go backwards next week and look at the Enneagram. All right. And you're like, well, how do I stay on top of this? Well, hey, you can subscribe or, or follow, like on any of the platforms that we are on. You can watch our videos on YouTube. You can watch our videos on Rumble. And you can always listen to the Graceful Warrior podcast on your favorite platform from A to Z, wherever you listen to radio, you can always listen to podcasts and look up the Graceful Warrior. If you don't know where to find us, you can go to my show notes and see, how do I listen to you? And there's a list of nine different areas that you can listen to the Graceful Warrior. All right. And um, so I just want to say thank you for praying and for the book and the fact of we were getting ready to release this in august and now it will probably come out as early as june so we're getting everything set up you'll be able to find this on amazon and you'll be able to get it as an ebook and a paperback and then we're going to get it on barnes and nobles as well kind of look at some other things of where we can release this Um, We are still researching to find out if we can add this to our merch store. You're like, wait, you have a store? Yes, we do. We released, we did a big announcement, the grand opening. And so you can check out our store. We have t-shirts, we have tote bags, coffee mugs, hats, and all sorts of, of things in there. I ordered a hat and I'll be getting that hopefully this week. So check out our merch store and the link is in the, in the description. And so I hope that I've covered all of the house cleaning issues. All right. And what I would like to get into now is I want to go ahead and and talk to you about what is going on in the political realm. And first and foremost, if you have not seen it, yet, or maybe you, you will have, but I want to take a look at this. If you haven't heard already, there was 26 people arrested today on the Golden Gate Bridge protest. And I want to, for those that are watching uh, this, this video, I want to show you this and um, let me get it up here for you guys. That's why it's, it's, Really, really awesome for you guys. If you can watch me on YouTube or on Rumble. Rumble is the alternative. More freedom to speak on there. And so I want to take a look at this. If you want to find me on Rumble or YouTube, you can go to the links and go find me there. And how do I listen? How do I follow you? Rumble and YouTube links are right there. And you click on that link and you can see all that we're talking about right now. But for now, you will be able to hear what I am sharing with um, all of the viewers. All right. So this uh, today on Monday in San Francisco, the southbound and northbound lanes on the Golden Gate Bridge have reopened because earlier this morning, the entire bridge was shut down by protesters. And you're just like, oh, my gosh, why? It was 
early, well, after they found out 60 protesters took part in shutting down the bridge, it started at 7.30 this morning and it began to go different areas of California. It was the Golden Gate Bridge. Then it was done over there in um, Oakland. Um, they went and shut down that area of the bridge. And so I want you to take a look at this for those that are watching. Arrested after the Golden Gate Bridge was shut down for several hours this morning as protesters chained themselves together. Quantifar's Dan Kerman spoke to the CHP and has the latest. The California Highway Patrol had their hands full on Monday as pro-Palestinian protesters used tax day to demonstrate against the Israeli-Gaza war by shutting down Bay Area freeways and the Golden Gate Bridge. I don't want my tax dollars. I don't want any dollars going to Israel to support the war on Gaza. The commute from the North Bay into San Francisco came to a grinding halt just before 8 Monday morning as demonstrators brought their cars to a stop on the southbound side of the bridge and then used pipes, chains and locks to make their removal difficult. Officers had to contend with numerous, excuse me, numerous vehicles chained with chains concealed with pipes connecting the drivers and passengers outside of the vehicles. The CHP then shut down the northbound lanes of the bridge, and then for more than four hours, those looking to get from one side to the other who weren't already stuck had to improvise. I am going to take a walk, hike, take an Uber to the ferry building, uh, and then take the ferry up to Sausalito, so probably another hour or two. The CHP ended up arresting 26 of the Golden Gate Bridge protesters who will face a variety of charges, including false imprisonment for preventing those stuck on the bridge from moving, as well as conspiracy. It was an orchestrated event that they put forth. They blocked uh, three separate locations on freeways. Uh, they prevented, you know, law enforcement, paramedics, ambulances to get to their points of destination and prevented that from happening. And that's, that can't happen. By 1215, lanes in both directions reopened on the Golden Gate. The CHP ended up impounding four vehicles. The CHP says they had intelligence something was going to happen on April 15th, but no specifics as to where and when. They say they will continue to respond to these incidents and get them cleared as quickly as they can. At the Golden Gate Bridge, Dan Kerman, Cron 4 News. All right. So isn't that um, just just crazy? It's crazy, 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 you know, and you think about that and you're like, you could have had like moms in labor on their way to the hospital, you know, or emergency, all of that crap. And you're just like, you know, it is so, there is so much hate going on towards Israel. And I want to show you guys something. I want to share this with you guys is that. I want to take a look at, and this was shared at my church this past Sunday, and I was like, wow, how profound. And so um, I want to make sure I give credit to where credit is due. Um, this was from my pastor up at St. Mary's that he shared this scripture, and I want to also share it with you guys. So if you have your Bibles, turn over to Psalms 83, and if you're sitting down and listening to, to this, if not, Keep driving, okay? <laughs> All right, Psalms 83, and I'm reading from the King James Version. And I'm starting from verse 1. Now think about this. From what we're dealing with in society today with Israel and the hate that people have towards Israel. I mean, when October, what was it, October 7th hit, when Israel was, was struck by Hamas, everybody was doing, oh no, poor Israel, and supporting Israel. Then we saw where our government went with everybody wearing the blue and yellow handkerchiefs out of their suits in Congress, right? And so it's just, there's a lot of hate towards Israel. But check this out. This is prophetic. Psalms 83. This one was done by Asaph. David wrote um, Psalms all the way up to, oh, what was it? All the way up to... Psalms chapter 72, Asaph, who worked with David, started taking over the Psalms um, book three from 73 on. I think it's to like chapter 80, but um, or, or 73 to 83 or something like that. <laughs> so listen to this. Do not keep silent, O God. 
do not hold your peace, and do not be still, O God. For behold, your enemies make a tumult, and those who hate you have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against your people and consulted together against your sheltered ones. Who is the sheltered ones? Israel. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gibal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assyria has also joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. And so you're like, what does that all mean? Well, it's basically saying what we are dealing with now. They are coming together. The, the wicked hearts are coming together and they want Israel out. They want to push them over the Red Sea. They don't want to be for them to be remembered anymore. And it's the hate that is growing and growing against Israel. And here it says in verse five, for they have consulted together with one consent. Well, who, who's been doing that? You look at the UN. The UN has been coming together and saying, okay, with one consent, what are we going to do about this? There's nobody good in the UN that is in favor of Israel. And then on top of that, you got Joe Biden, who is not even going to support Israel, even though Iran just attacked them over the weekend. And you're just like, what is going on? The days are getting more and more wicked, right? And all of these were, or I talked about, or I read the verses that said the tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, all of those. You could go, um, just for the sake of time, you could go in the back of your Bible and take a look at all of those different areas and see those present day areas and what they are. And you only had Israel there um, was getting pummeled by all of this, these rockets from Iran. Where did Iran get this? From who else? China. But where did they get the money to buy all of that? Joe Biden. This What was it? The $6 billion that was handed over? Of course, you know, and it's, but here's the, here's the blessing out of all of this. When we get together and we pray for Israel, God's hand was involved in that. They said not one rocket intercepted in there. Not one thing was destroyed. I think it was possibly one person that got destroyed. And I think it was the, it was actually within Iran, if I'm not mistaken. And the U S and Jordan were there to take down and drones were there to take down all of this. So, uh, you know, it was just amazing. God's hand is, will always protect Israel, even though they are stubborn and not recognizing that he is their one true Messiah. And, um, just looking at Psalms 83, you were, I was sitting there just going, wow, Asaph was prophetic in all of this. They have consulted together with one consent. They form a confederacy against you. The UN is forming this. Everybody is saying death to Israel. Everybody is saying death to America from this group, Palestinian group, and the colleges that you have all of these liberals, these left liberal teachers, and look at the brainwashing of our college students. And the kid in the video, I mean, he had sunglasses on to hide his face, a mask on. You know, if I was a parent, and I'm just speaking honestly, if I was a parent, I would be going, what in the world? You have that much time to go and do this on my Money that I am trying to pay for your college? Well, you could even erase that one. What's Joe Biden doing now? He's trying to go ahead and give free money to help these kids pay for college. And yet they're not even learning anything. You know, and it's just one big 
mess, right? But here's the thing. And it, it's so true. Even when my pastor brought this up, it is so true. God says that he will bless those that bless you and he will curse those that curse you. And he was talking to Israel. And you think about all these people that are saying death to Israel, death to America. You know, God hears and sees all that. Their blessing was now wiped out or not even their blessing was not even given to them because God knew their heart already. Can you imagine just going out there and saying that, knowing that a curse is now going to be upon you from God Almighty because you just cursed Israel, you just cursed America? That's what the fear of the Lord is. You, I mean, according to the world, that's an example of the fear of the Lord. You better, boy, if you, I pray that these people are given mercy, one more chance to repent of what they've said against Israel and against America. I pray that God gives them another chance to, to ask for forgiveness. And if not, God is the righteous judge. What he, what he says, this is it. This is the sentence. God is a holy and just God and his judgments are true and correct. Right. And so pray for Israel, continue to pray for Israel, pray for Netanyahu, who that God will help him with his decision making, that God will put people in his path that will give him advice according to the scriptures, according to the good of all the people, not so that they could make money off of anything and pray that, that Joe Biden has no influence on Netanyahu whatsoever. God will still protect Israel. So pray for Israel and the people, pray for the soldiers that are up there. Um, I have been praying for them, just remembering of my times being in Iraq. I pray for strength. I pray for peace. I pray, you know, that they would just have rest and that the soldiers that would get up and they would be refreshed and ready to go with new plans, new perspective, things will be found out. Um, I pray against every wicked plan that would set itself up against Israel. And there is no weapon formed that will prosper against Israel. All right, because greater is he that is in and protecting Israel than this enemy that seeks to destroy it. So I just wanted to share that with you. I thought it was awesome, awesome, awesome that what my pastor had brought up and there was so much more going on in Israel. It's, it's quite deep and that whole thing. And so um, these people will pay for what they are doing. All right. So um, and then I wanted to come on here and talk about the the big uh, thing going on. Trump's hush money trial prosecutors um, key arguments in this criminal case. Right. So today was the day that Trump becomes the supposed uh, first ex president to face criminal jury over all of these alleged payments to um, Stormy Daniel. Right. And um, so Trump goes to Manhattan court for his trial and he, he faces a criminal jury. And there was actually 500 prospective jurors that were summoned to Manhattan Supreme Court. And they went through the selection process. I heard today, I think 50 out of 94 were, um, were like, hey, you got to go. Nope. 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 So they were pulling him out. And if you don't know what's going on, Alvin Bragg, the corrupt district attorney in Manhattan, um, he's charged Trump with 34 counts of falsifying business records over alleged hush money um, involving Stormy Daniels. Right. And but here's what I found out. And this is crazy is that even if this went on or they 
as far as Trump, if he did pay Stormy Daniels off um, to be quiet about all of this, and uh, he paid from his own pocket. What um, Alvin Bragg is saying is that he should have paid Stormy Daniels out of his campaign funds, which is totally illegal to do. They can't do that. Anything personal, whether you go and you go, um, I don't know, you go do a face masking, you know, or you go to a spa, you cannot use campaign funds for anything personal. You can't go get a new car. You can't go get liposuction or whatever with campaign funds. So Trump paid Stormy Daniels off with his own personal money. And it's a matter of they found out that this never even happened. And there's a statute of limitations of the fact that this is way old. This is water under the bridge. And so Alvin Bragg's office contends that Trump facilitated the, play, uh, the payoffs to the women through his, his then attorney, Michael Cohen. And what's interesting is that Michael Cohen is, he worked for Trump and is now the one they're bringing in to say that, that Michael, you were the one involved in paying all of these people off, you know, and you're just like, oh my gosh. So Cohen in 2018, he actually pleaded guilty to the federal charges in Manhattan related to his involvement in this particular scheme, among other crimes that he was involved in. But see, Trump has maintained his innocence. And Trump largely claims that these proceedings are a they're politically motivated witch hunt, which they are, and they are intended to stop. Trump from going out on um, presidential rallies and and it's basically to stop Trump in his 2024 election process, right? And um, so, but it's not going to work. Trump has stayed clean. If you haven't noticed already, Trump has been clean and Here's why I say Trump has been clean. I'm not glorifying Trump in any way, shape, or form. Trump is a man. Trump has faults just like everybody else is. But God did not raise up a man to have a dirty past so that it can be used against him in a political race to help make America great, right? God knew Trump's heart. God kept Trump clean in certain areas, you know, now, did he actually have things that were made in China? Yeah, I saw that he did. He was on, um, what is it, uh, Larry King? Uh, before he was even president, his ties, Larry King said that his ties were made in China. And so Trump has business in China. Do we all hate that now? Yes, we do. We found out that Trump or that China is very wicked, but Trump didn't do it for anything that is against the United States. I'm not going to speculate why he did it, you know, but Trump was a man. He, he is a man. He handled his business affairs. Everything that has gone on has come out clean and true. And so I just want to um, encourage you guys, pray, uh, pray for Trump. He has maintained his innocence and with other criminal and civil cases that are coming against him, uh, they are a political witch hunt. They are there to try to stop him. They are pulling out everything they can to stop Trump. But here's the cool part. I think that no matter what they do to Trump, say the worst, the worst of the worst is, say they go ahead and they slap the bracelets on him and they put him behind bars. Say that's what happens. 
don't you think that we are going to come in and vote and we are going to put Trump on the ballot? Even if they take his name off the ballot, we are going to come in and still put Trump on that piece of paper in a, a, a black marker. Even if you have to come in with a black marker, what they will do to Trump will make him the president of the United States because the people are waking up. People are seeing that what they are doing is not right. All right. So you have a lot of this, this junk going around with everything that has been going with Trump's alleged passing off hush money payouts as even for remittance for, for legal work. And they're saying that it was made and caused a false entry in the business records of the, of the whole Trump enterprise. But it's not true. It, it really, they're, they're just coming up with everything that they can. The judge is even corrupt. The judge is involved. The family is involved in organizations that are against him. But God's hand is still in this. So don't think that God is just sitting back and watching. God's hand is in this. Everybody will pray. And Trump will come out of this on top. And what the enemy has stolen will have to pay back sevenfold. All right. So there is another accusation coming out with this, the Karen McDougal accusation. If you haven't heard this one, um, the publisher of the National Enquired um, paid 150000 to uh, McDougal, Karen McDougal. And she was a supposed former adult model. And she claims to have had a inappropriate relationship with Trump. And um, AMI, which is the National Enquirer place, entered um, into a non-prosecution agreement with Manhattan federal prosecutors um, amid the, the Cohen uh, investigation with Stormy Daniels. They contacted Cohen off after McDougal's attorney reached out to the National Enquirer and they were hoping to sell her story. Well, AMI enters into the agreement with McDougal to buy the limited life rights to be able to her account of a relationship with a supposed married man, any married man, right? So then it goes on to say that AMI agrees to feature the model on two magazine covers and that it could run more than 100 magazine articles authored by McDougal. Well, AMI enters into this August 2016 deal with McDougal to publish features and articles, but they had no intention of running them. So as the agreement was, it was to suppress the model story so as to prevent it from influencing the election. See where this is all going? So now enters in Manhattan State prosecutors uh, to contend that Trump explicitly directed Cohen to repay an AMI with cash. So Cohen, if you're following along now, check this out. So Cohen in turn tells Trump that AMI should be reimbursed through a shell company and the media company owned by the longtime Trump al ally, David Pecker, what an interesting name, decided in the end not to accept reimbursement following consultations with their counsel and, of course, the Manhattan's DA office. Hmm. So, but check this out. Everybody is always involved. There's always some little man to see something. And here it is, the doorman's claim. So around October, November 2015, uh, David Pecker, interesting name, learned that an ex-Trump Tower doorman was trying to peddle information about a child 
uh, Trump allegedly fathered out of wedlock. Why would this happen? Under David's direction, because this is David Pecker, right? I'm just going to say David. Under David's direction, AMI agrees to pay him 30000 for the, the exclusive rights to the story. So AMI, per Manhattan prosecutors, they falsify character, falsely characterize this payment in AMI's books and records, hmm. including in its general ledger. So now it looks totally different, right? Well, the publisher brokered this deal without investigating it and later learned the account was untrue. Does that matter now? Nope. They're going to continue with this. While David wanted to release the ex-doorman from his deal, Cohen tells him not to do so until after the election. So see, they find out that the story wasn't even true. And now they want to hold this whole thing until after the election. So it's, you know, this is just so crazy. It, it's not going to even work. You know, Trump and and the cronies were concerned about damaging information for more than a year before the election. But pressured, pressure intensified on, on in, in October 2016. Well, supposedly on that date, the Washington Post published audio in which Trump boasted that the infamous thing that he could grope women without their consent due to his fame, right? We all know about that one. And um, so we know what was said. And, but it, it it's, you know, all of that made made Trump to be like, the bad guy in all this. Was it right for him to say all of that? No. You know, um, it's interesting that they, they caught him, um, saying that years ago. And then the fact that they want to use it now. And that's a statute of limitations thing. That was something he was just another Joe Schmo in society, a rich Joe Schmo in society. And, and then on top of that, prosecutors are now saying in today's, all of the mishaps of today, all of the lies of today, prosecutors are saying that Trump tried to stall the Daniels payoff for as long as possible. And that Trump told Cohen that if he could delay the exchange until after the election, they might be able to avoid giving her any money. Because at that point, it would not matter if the story became public because Trump would already be in. But why would Trump say that? Um, because the stories do matter when you become president, because all of that comes out, right? So I'm actually still saying, no, none of this is true. Um, none of it is, is going to go anywhere. And it's just crazy that all of this is going on. I think that it's, it's a way to stop Trump. Basically, it's a way just to stop Trump from being on the campaign trail, um, from going out and doing what he wants to do to win the election. But at the same time, it's like, uh, look at everybody. The Hispanic community is turning around and going, okay, enough is enough. And you've got the black community is turning around going, Democrats have never done anything for us. And they're spending all this money. And yet they turn around and they say, it's the Republicans spending all the money. Well, now y'all see, and it's just, it goes into exactly what people have been saying for a long time when all of this first came out. Sometimes you can't tell, or sometimes you can't tell people. That's what it is. Sometimes you can't tell people um, what's going on. You have to show them and they have to be drugged through the mud to figure it out. And they have to be able to stand up and go enough is enough. And when is that time where America will say enough is enough? You know, we've got the open borders right now. We have to keep our head on a swivel and 
We have to watch out for each other. We have to keep keep our churches in check. Make sure everybody is safe. Don't walk around out there after dark and alone. Go in a group. If you have to be out, you know, it might be better just to stay at home um, on the weekends. And um, be safe out there. God is still with us. But we also have to think smart and be wise out there. All right. So I wanted to just take a little bit of time and kind of talk about what's going on and and um, give my perspective. And they're like, what's my perspective? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Because no matter, no matter what's out there, no matter what's going on, we have to trust the Lord. And I want to share a poem with you as we get ready to close. And um, if I can even actually find it, I don't even know where it's at now. But I'll give you the highlights of it because I never memorized it. It was a poem that the Lord gave me a while back. And it's interesting to look at it now and go, wow, this is what you have presented to me exactly for this moment. And it says, I will praise you in the storm, no matter what I see. I will praise you in the storm, no matter what the world seems to be. I will praise you in the storm. I don't care if it's not the norm. I will praise you, praise you, O my King, in the storm. And so with that, praise him for everything that you have. God inhabits the praises of his people. Look for the blessings. Look for all of the ways that you can bless the Lord and say thank you. For this is the day that you have made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. With that, have a blessed day, everybody. Keep your head up, your head on a swivel. And remember, lace up the combat boots. Have a blessed day. And that's a wrap for today's episode of The Graceful Warrior. Thank you for joining us in the arena where grit meets grace. Remember, every challenge is an opportunity to wield the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith. Stay tuned for our next episode, where we'll continue to explore the battles and victories that shape our lives. If you've enjoyed the journey, please subscribe and leave us a review. Until next time. Keep contending for the faith through grace and grit.